So with the action well underway at Whistling Straits, we've been talking to one of the veterans in the field. Davis Love III was a winner of the PGA Championship back in 1997. Anna Whiteley caught up with the 51-year-old during a practice round on this spectacular course. Davis, it's great to see you here at the PGA Championship. And actually, this is the only major that we see you competing in across the year. What do you love so much about this championship? Well, I love uh, that I won and I get, keep getting in every year. <laughs> uh, it is nice. I've been out with injuries a little bit the last couple of years, so I've missed, missed some majors, so it's nice to be in one for, for the year. Well, 1997 was the year that we saw you lift the Wanamaker Trophy. Just explain to us how that felt and becoming a major champion. How did that feel? Well, it's amazing. That's your goal as a kid. You know, you're always making putts on the putting green to, to win a major championship. And my dad, being a PGA member his whole life, um, a club pro and teaching pro, made this one even more special for me. So it was, it was a great feeling. And of course, your brother was on the bag. Just how much more special did that make it? As I know, walking up the 18th, you'd already won the championship. Just talk us through that final walk. Well, it's just great. My brother was such a big part of so much of my career, so many of my wins, and to get the major with him on the bag and to come up the 18th with Justin Leonard, one of my close friends who had won his British Open that year. It was, it was a special week, a special year, and uh, always a great memories when you come back to the PGA. Well this year we're here at Whistling Straits, you've played a few holes, what do you think of the course so far? It's a bit of a challenging one isn't it? It is, it's tough, you have to drive the ball well here, you have to hit the ball in the fairway, keep it out of the rough and obviously keep it out of the bunkers, it's a it's a daunting course but if you hit the ball well um, it's to your advantage and ball striking is usually my strength so it ought to suit my game. Well next year as we know is a huge year for you, Ryder Cup captain, it's your second go. Talk us about your first time in 2012, the miracle at Medina. What a year that was. Well, it was an incredible. I had a great team and they played very, very well for two days and the Europeans played very well but those two days and we just had a flat day on Sunday and they kept up the good play. So um, it was a fun experience. I never thought I'd get to do it again, obviously, but uh, with Darren, it's going to be a great experience. Uh, good friends. We always wanted to do it with each other. I thought I'd miss that opportunity, but this is going to be a great, uh, you know, year and a half to spend working with him on the Ryder Cup. Well, we want to talk to you a little bit more about the Ryder Cup. We let you hit your second shot and we'll come back to you all if right. that's all right. So, as you just said, that was such an amazing year for the Ryder Cup and that final day for Europe, I mean, it was the greatest turnaround that we've ever seen for the Ryder Cup. How did that feel for you as US captain? It must have just been unbelievable. Well, it was it was amazing that it, that it happened and the way it happened, you know, with Rory coming in late and um, so many guys playing so well on the European side. They, they got their uh, all their putts to fall. And it was a lot like uh, the U.S. team did at Brookline. You know, just everything had to happen perfectly for a four-point comeback. And, you know, we did it to them in 99, and they did it to us in 12. It's just two of the most incredible Ryder Cups, and I was a part of both of them. So it, it was stinging for our team. You know, they, they had played so well. They'd done everything right for two days. And then to have a kind of a flat day on Sunday was disappointing. But... We got beat by a team that was on a roll and it's hard to stop something like that when momentum gets on your side. And you were a very popular captain. Is there anything that you think you might do differently next year? Well, we might, we're gonna do a few things differently. We have um, you know, this new kind of energy with this task force and now committee that we've formed for the Ryder Cup. We have a bunch of guys pulling together, you know, helping the captain. The assistant captains are all working together a little bit more. And we've got a few different ideas, you know, but I think we're gonna be a little more organized and a little more focused and um, you know we've lost three in a row so we had to mix it up a little bit but you know still have kind of the same team energy they the guys came right back real well in the president's cup in 13 and one so we know we can win it's just a matter of doing it in the Ryder cup well you said you have a great relationship with darren we've, we've seen you paired up on thursday for the first round here will there be much chat about the Ryder cup will there be much banter between the two of you do you think oh, i'm sure there will you know we've um we've discussed a lot about the Ryder cup over the years both of us being assistant captains and me being captain a lot of things about strategy and but now it's down to logistics for he and i you know it's getting things organized when are we going to be at hazel team things to do with the team rooms and you know, I grabbed the first locker room and gave him the second, so I'm gonna have to tease him <laughs> about that, that he's getting all the second choices this time. But um, we do, we're, we've, been, we've been good, respectful friends for a long time, so it's gonna be an easy process for us. And the one bit of advice that you would give to Darren? Well, I think uh, one piece of advice that 
Paul Azinger gave me is you can control what you can control and the rest you have to just let it go because there's so many things going on around you that you can't try to control everything. And if he can just focus on his team, taking care of his team and the things that he can work on and let the rest go, he'll, he'll have a much easier time. Well, it's going to be a great battle. We can't wait. Yeah. Davis, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right.